We've got a great story of malicious compliance against some airport security, but first... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Doctor. So this happened to my husband the other day, and I felt the need to share. He was answering an email from a customer, and they had a note on their account they requested to be addressed as doctor. My husband didn't know this at the time that he sent the initial email. He addressed him as Jacob, fake name. He responded quite rudely with, it's Mr. or Doctor to you. Since he was rude, he responded with, My apologies, Dr. Mr. Let's just say that he was none too pleased, but it was worth it. I do think it's pretty bold to just go straight for first name. I think you should at least offer Mr. up. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, Oh, you're gonna replace what I ate. So here we go again at Mendy's drive-thru. This one started in the drive-thru and then ended in our lobby. I got to witness my manager, we'll call him Bruce, being petty as freak, straight sassy. A customer orders one of our smaller burger meals, including one of our smaller patties, to eventually eat in the lobby. The junior bacon cheeseburger comes with a small, hot, two ounce patty, cold cheese, cold lettuce, hot bacon, cold tomato, cold mayo. See where I might be going with this? The repeat customer definitely didn't. It's crucial to eat this burger within a couple of minutes of receiving it to really enjoy the burger. So anyway, we hand out the bag of goodies. Then we see him 10 minutes later walk in the lobby with his bag in his hand. Open, losing all of that crucial temperature. He sits down. What happens next? is something I could only describe as a la Tom Segura weird crap. I mean, for like the 1930s it would be normal, but this dude whips out a newspaper from seemingly nowhere. Like seriously, was he only holding a paper bag saying Mendy's? Flaps it open like he was in the movies, finagles a monocle out of his shirt pocket, actually uses it, and about 10 minutes later, he takes a bite out of his now room temperature burger. Yes, we all watched. Like, there were customers galore in the drive-thru, but this was a sight to see. I then returned to my duties. About a picosecond later, time flies. Steampunk Stu approaches the counter with the fervor of a kid, asking us for a free toy with a more than half-eaten burger in tow. This me was cold, ma'am. The dichotomy of his talking with a mouthful of food, while being dressed to the nines, paralleled how his burger was supposed to taste. Hot and cold. And he was talking to Bruce, so he meant man, just to add to the schleppiness of his overall vibe. Bruce asked him, at the risk of getting further pummeled by chunks of drippy chunks of mouth meat, to repeat himself. He stood there chewing for an awkwardly long amount of time. The meat, it's flunking cold. Bruce begins to mendy explain that the smaller burgers, even at their very hottest, rapidly react with the very cold lettuce, mayo, and tomato. You ordered the burger an hour ago. If you don't plan on eating it right away, we can always... Stu interrupted to shout, I can't eat this crap. Bruce says, sir, you're eating it right now. They said, oh, you're gonna replace what I ate. I have my rights, I know how it is. Bruce started to reply, but you ate. Then he had a malicious compliance epiphany. Okay, we'll replace what you ate. I was very excited to hear this, so best believe I turned to see what he was up to. I was so excited. Usually it's me who commits a malicious compliance and Bruce is the chill one. But not this time. You see, Bruce is a true neat freak. We're like the odd couple. And evidently being spit on made Bruce very malicious. Bruce style. I couldn't wait to see what he was about to do. I first knew he was up to churlishness when he was insisting on taking the heavily patchouli demands burger back. Oh, it was glorious. Never before had he looked so handsome, so debonair as when he double gloved to take this man's burger, put it on a wrapper, and assemble an identical burger, which he cut perfectly to match the other 40% of the burger that Stu hasn't eaten. He nuked the old burger to kill any steampunk midichlorians left hanging around, and reassembled his burger puzzle and wrapped it like it was new. He handed it to Stu, and you better believe we all waited to see the aftermath. Homeboy opened the burger right there, and with a look of disgust yelled, Are you freaking kidding me? 
He threw the burger at the wall and ran out, swearing that he'll yelp us until we close. I'm so proud of Bruce, though I know he's ashamed. Honestly, there was probably no winning with some overly eccentric character like that, so maybe grossing them out and making them hurry out of the place and threatening a bad Yelp review, maybe that's for the best. You know, just get them out of your hair. Our next story is 10,000 steps a day or else. Years ago, long before smartphones or Fitbits, a coworker of mine, Bob, had a relatively mild heart attack. We joked in secret that it was caused by his wife, but the other secret is we weren't really joking. She was awful. She was just an intolerable person and no one liked her. I'm pretty sure Bob didn't like his own wife. If he did, it was probably Stockholm Syndrome. At any rate, when Bob returned to work, he returned with a pedometer clipped to his belt. Every day, Bob would walk as much as he could when he wasn't pinned down to his desk, but he was suffering and his work was suffering. As a supervisor at the time, I figured he was struggling with his recovery, so we just moved a lot of his work to others and left him with the cases he specialized in. That worked for everyone because those cases drove others nuts and he was a whiz at them. His other work was comparatively easy. However, at the end of his first full week back, the issue became more clear. I overheard Bob's wife berating him in the parking lot because he didn't even meet half of his steps goal. Turns out the pedometer didn't come from his doctor, it came from his wife. She was demanding that Bob increase from his current 4,200 steps a day that were almost killing him to somehow 10,000 steps a day. This will read at least 10,000 at the end of every workday, or it'll be your butt, were her words. Now, Bob was a tall guy with a long stride, so she was somehow expecting him to fit in over 6 miles of walking during his workday while recovering. But you know, since he'd had a heart attack, maybe she was just looking out for him, right? Nope. His doctor had actually cautioned him against overdoing it. He was only supposed to be walking a mile and a half a day, and not all at once. But his wife wasn't having it. She demanded more, and he tried, but wasn't doing so well. After another week of this, and another chewing out in the parking lot, we developed a plan. Bob's pedometer sat on the corner of his desk while he was working. If anyone had to walk down the hall or to the other building, they'd grab the pedometer on their way out of the office. Bob did have to tolerate another couple of butt chewings because we ramped him up to 10,000 steps instead of jumping straight there. We figured that would be suspicious otherwise. In the end, Bob got his 10,000 steps every day. Well, Bob's pedometer registered over 10,000 steps every day, and almost a third of them were actually his steps. Bob was overjoyed to have the help, and we were all willing to keep the secret because we were frightened of her turning on us. Teamwork makes the dream work. I mean, OP and all of the other co-workers are amazing people for helping out here, but why is nothing being done either from others trying to influence Bob or Bob themselves about this crazy abusive wife? Our next story is dine-in only. When I was really poor about six years ago, I was taking a smoke break at my dead-end full-time job and saw a fully stamped rewards card for a local spaghetti place on the ground. It was an entire meal, salad, pasta, and a drink completely for free. No stipulations listed on the card other than presenting and exchanging it. Typically, I didn't eat lunch because I couldn't afford to, so this was an insanely good find that meant that day, for whatever reason, the universe was paying for my lunch. I picked it up and when lunchtime hit, I ran over to the diner since it was fairly close and asked for my meal to go presenting the card. I only had a 30 minute lunch break and was paid by time punches so it was pretty strict. The place was empty and the old woman scowled at me and told me the offer was dine in only. I showed her the card and pointed out that nowhere on the card does it state that. She scoffed and insisted it was dine in only. I thought about it for a second and since the place was dead I asked for a table. I ordered exactly what was offered with the card went through the charade of waiting for her to bring it all out separately on their fancy plates, each time smiling at the same rude old woman that was now serving me. When everything was in front of me, she said if I needed anything to let her know. I immediately requested to-go boxes and her fake hostess facade dropped entirely. 
She had someone else bring them out to me. Leaving the card on the table, I hurriedly packed everything up, including my drink, and took it back to work to scarf down on my second break. It was the best free spaghetti I'd ever had. I was trying to figure out why exactly she would demand it's sit-in only. Then I realized, even though you're getting the meal for free, if you sit in, you're probably expected to leave a tip. So surely they're expecting some kind of money. This next story is, caused airport security to upchuck their cookies. This happened when I was on my way home from SRS surgery. My painkillers were seized and I had to prove I just had surgery. Are you sure you want to see? So I dropped my undies and showed them my new to me, very swollen lady parts. But of course, I was taken to the back in a private room. I never saw someone lose their cookies before so quickly. I got a first class escort to my flight, an apology, and my meds returned. Never seen someone backpedal so quickly. I'm imagining if you go and get a surgery like that, it's probably something you were looking forward to for quite a while. So I'm sure OP was already probably on cloud 9, getting a chance to prove it and absolutely shut these people up for calling you out. It almost felt like OP was insisting they do so. That said, our final story of the day is, shut the freak up, get in the truck, and do what you're told. You got it. So, I live in a pretty small city by American standards in Canada, 250,000 people. People joke that it's a giant small town and it's hard to go somewhere without knowing someone who either knows you or has heard of you. I run a small contracting business that maintains properties for seniors. Think grass mowing, tree trimming, etc. In the winter, there isn't a lot going on, so I lay off the summer crew and usually bounce around to different companies to help them with their snow removal. I hold a commercial driver's license as well as equipment operator license, among others, so most of the larger companies know me and are more than happy to have me around. Over the weekend, I was called by the biggest company in my city to help with hauling snow to the city snow dump, a gravy job, and lots of hours. I had never worked with their crew, but quickly got along with everyone but the company Grump, which was expected. Of course, the company Grump is the one working on the weekend loading trucks. After the first location, he gave me some cash to get us coffee. I meet him at the next location and hand him his drink. He takes a drink and notices it's wrong. He gets out of the bobcat and throws the full, extra large coffee into the distance, getting caught by the wind, spraying me with liquid, all while cursing me out. I decided to let it go. Everyone's been working long hours and, well, some people in construction are just giant man-children. I offered to grab him another coffee and he declined. I went back to my truck to drink my coffee and talk to the other driver in my truck. When the operator comes over to our truck to witch at us about his coffee, after I offered to get him another. Shortly after, I realized that I had his change in my pocket. Knowing this guy, I better return it. I walked over to the bobcat to give him his money and let him know that if he did that again, there would be problems. We had a few words before he told me to shut the freak up, get back in my truck, and do what I was told. And if I did, stuff like that wouldn't happen. So I did. I went back to my truck and did as I was told. Little did the operator know, he's been on thin ice, and I was told by his boss to let him know if we had problems with him. Furious, I jumped back in my truck, called his boss, and went home. Not even 20 minutes later, I get a call from his boss telling me that they fired him and were begging me to come back. Moral of the story is treat each other with respect, especially in the workplace. I just can't imagine too many jobs where, whether it's somebody that's working on the same level as you or a subordinate, where if they get you a coffee and it's not right, that you can just take it and chuck it into the distance and not get any kind of reprimanding. I mean, I feel like even most managers, even on a construction job or whatever, if they were to do that and it were to be reported, you know, maybe there's proof of it, I feel like most people wouldn't be able to just get away with that without at least getting a talking to. I think this dude had some kind of like anger issues or something. 
But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.